please, Rita Rudner. Rita. Oh, thank you. This is so exciting to finally be on the show because it, it happens, you know, and it is a little upsetting. Like last time, all my friends called me up the next day and said, we stayed up. <laughs> What was worse was my parents called me up and told me how wonderful I was. <laughs> I've been on TV for a while, though. Before I did comedy, I did commercials. I announced to the country that I had bad breath and dandruff problem perspiration. People would recognize me on the street. They'd try to hose me down. <laughs> and when I started, I was so classy. I started out, I was a ballerina. It was, I had to quit the ballet, though, after I injured a groin muscle. <laughs> it wasn't mine. <laughs> I love being a comedian, except you do, you travel constantly. But my purse has been x-rayed in that little machine at the airport so many times, it has a lung now. <laughs> you know, one thing you should never do on a long trip? Start up a game of peekaboo with the child sitting in front of you. <laughs> There's, there's no ending to the game. He turned around. I finally just grabbed him by the bib. I said, look, it's always going to be me. <laughs> and you stay in hotels. I was in a Howard Johnson's once. You know, their slogan used to be, I'm not making it up, if it's not your mother, it must be Howard Johnson's. <laughs> That was their slogan. I was staying there. I called down for room service about four in the afternoon. I was hungry. They said, no, it'll spoil your dinner. <laughs> the maid came in every morning. She said, clean up your room. <laughs> I was checking out the lady behind the desk. The desk said, go ahead, leave, doesn't matter. I'll, I'll be dead in a couple weeks. <laughs> There's really only one way to describe my mother. There's a very old saying, I don't know if you've heard it. Neurotics build castles in the air and psychotics live in them. <laughs> my mother cleans them. I'm an only child, so I was very overprotected when I was growing up. Really, my tricycle had seven wheels. <laughs> and a driver. <laughs> my parents, they wouldn't even push me on the swing. They, they'd just sit me on the swing and run back and forth and say, it looks similar to this. <laughs> I always thought I was adopted when I was growing up, too, because I don't look anything like anyone in my family. Well, I look a little like my grandmother now because I have brown hair and blue eyes, and she has blue hair and brown eyes. <laughs> it's my mother's mother. She's a very tough cookie. Really, she buried three husbands. Two of them were just napping. <laughs> been married forever really they even have the same fingerprints now <laughs> they've passed their gold and silver anniversaries their next one coming up is rust <laughs> i think it's wonderful you know because marriages they don't last anymore really when i meet a guy sometimes the first question i ask myself is i don't know is this the man i want my children to spend their weekends with <laughs> do want me to get married badly. In fact, last time I went home, they threw me a surprise wedding. <laughs> and they don't care who anymore. As long as he doesn't have a pierced ear, that's all they care about. I think men who have a pierced ear are better prepared for marriage. Well, they've experienced pain and bought jewelry. <laughs> I don't talk about sex too much on stage because my parents are watching this and I don't think that they know that I know. And, uh, 
We've never had the discussion. Once I asked my dad the facts of life, he said, if you don't pay your mortgage, the bank forecloses on the house. <laughs> I did read that men reach their sexual peak at 18, and women reach their sexual peak at 35. Do you get the feeling God is into practical jokes? <laughs> We're reaching our sexual peak right around the same time they're discovering they have a favorite chair. <laughs> Most men don't want to get involved nowadays. In fact, I dated my last boyfriend for about two years and finally I just gave him an ultimatum. I said, listen, either you tell me your name or it's over. <laughs> playing tennis he couldn't even say 30 love <laughs> kept saying 30 I really like you but I still have to see other people <laughs> so many men are like that in fact you know how I end relationships now I don't say this isn't working out or I don't want to see you anymore if I never want to see a man again I just say you know I love you <laughs> I want to marry you I want to have your children. Sometimes they leave skid marks. 